welcome back to my channel my name is lungi and as you've seen from the title of this video we are doing love marriage and divorce and this is episode one so we are going to be talking about heartbreaks Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lungi, and on today's show, we are launching season one of Love, Marriage, and Divorce. Today, we have Kanelo Kalizalo, and he's going to be sharing his story with us of how somebody can go from being in love and go to the marriage phase and then being divorced. So, uh, let's just take it away. Kanelo, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Lungi. Yourself? I'm great, thank yes, you. So, we're just going to shoot into it. The first question that I have for you is, what did being married teach you? Taught me uh, selflessness. Um, I think the most important thing is now that you don't long, you no longer live for yourself. Mm. And you live for another person. So. I think more than anything, it taught me selflessness. Because yeah, right. a lot of things, a lot of the way I used to live was that I used to make decisions for myself where I want to go, what's my plans. Now you need to include this person and make sure you don't trample their dreams while chasing yours. Mm -hmm. But your dreams and your vision where you're going uh, are basically moving in the same direction. How old were you when you got married? Uh, how old was I in 2015? <laughs> <laughs> Very young. Uh, 29. So you were already selfless in Alaska Stats? Yeah. yeah. Well, I had kids already, so mm. at least I knew that um, whatever decisions I make it will affect someone else. So, yeah. The second question is, I prayed and thought it was God's will for me to marry this person. So what happens when you make a vow and you don't keep your vow mm. what happens when the sure the thing with that for me what i realized actually going through the whole process here to us mm. is that i remembered a, a scripture that says the spirit of god will not uh wrestle with man yeah 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 so it, it, i realized also god can have plans but if man says no then god can't do anything about it because he's a spirit and for him to operate in his world, he needs man. Mm. So as much as I fought, I fought and I fought, and I even went to uh, therapists and psychologists to try pastors. Mm. Um, but my ex-wife really would not, did not want to be married anymore. So, yeah. I mean, you can't, there's nothing else you can do. So at that time, what gave me peace is that I fought with everything I could fight for. Mm. Um, but if the person no longer wants to be married to you, then I mean you can't be married to yourself. Yeah, yeah. So that's you true. have to at, at, at the stage let go. So I to myself, mm. I prayed, and when the will of God didn't happen, you know, I just felt okay. This person doesn't want to be here with me, or is not um, in agreement with me and with yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. So if there's no agreement, then there's no blessing. Yeah. So if there's no agreement, there's no unity, and there's no. You know, there's no one nice. The yeah. reason I ask this is because King Saul, God gave him the promise to be a king. Mm. But as soon as he didn't honor the covenant, mm. God took the kingship away from him. Yeah. So I wanted you as a Christian to narrate to somebody to say, but didn't they say they prayed? Didn't they say we heard God? Didn't the pastor give a go ahead? You know how it is, yeah. Yeah. So you you know, man, Vazalani, you pray and you're like, I know God. We are Lomuntu. And then two years down the line things change so was it hard for you to accept that as a christian or for me it was difficult that's mm. why i fought so much to keep the marriage going um but again you must also understand it's not black and white it's also someone has to be in agreement mm. you both have to be in agreement if you're not in agreement then you know there's, yeah. there's nothing you can do yeah. <laughs> yeah the chosen king becomes the rejected king yeah. so uh the third question is can you survive divorce and i know you being here means you've survived it but i want to know how do you reinvent yourself because when you go through a divorce it's such i don't know i'm gonna talk for myself and then you will just um tell me if you feel the same there's nothing as disturbing as 
breaking up something that you thought was a forever thing and something that brings routine into your life so for me divorce is something that it's like a demo it comes and it breaks routine it comes and it breaks your finances it comes and it breaks you it breaks your soul so i want to know how do you reinvent yourself how do you not carry that hat how do you move on and just be a new person because yeah. now you've learned to do things as a couple if you do hiking it's because maybe somebody liked hiking yeah. so now it's part of your routine it's who you are how do you reinvent yourself i think that's the most difficult thing yeah. after divorce to do um because for me um it really i did not want to get divorced yeah um i, I did not want to i mean purely because also all of my friends and everyone i was surrounded with serious couples people that were engaged all mm. of my very good friends so we even had um a, a, i won't call it a society but it's a society where we save money up and then in december we all take our wives on a holiday okay. and we've decided as as my friends that this is what we're going to do every year uh, my friends are still continuing with it and you can yeah. imagine i'm no longer part of that yeah and i was one of the people that initiated that so reinventing yourself honestly for me um and it was difficult because then i had lost all my money i'd mm. lost businesses i'd lost jobs yeah. i'd lost cars i'd lost everything mm. um i basically listened to sermons and i know it, it might sound like i'm trying to be you know super spiritual but i can't explain it that's the only thing i did mm. i listened to sermons every night because i was crying every night and i was asking god why and from the second question i prayed and this was supposed to be forever yeah um so it was basically an every night thing and every day thing keep telling myself it's going to be okay it's going to be okay um and it I don't never have, was it, okay. It never was okay. Never you know, you, okay. There, there isn't really an answer. You just take it one day at a time. One day at a time. And you just keep telling her, you cry, cry it out. When yeah. the pain comes, cry. Don't, you have to feel pain. I mean, I remember I used to cry every single night. I used sure. to cry every single day. But you, you carry on, you, you keep trying. And I was looking for a job at the time. Sure. So I spent my energy on that. Mm. Um, and subsequently, uh, some time later, I found a job and then my business also started picking up. So I invested energy in that and invested energy in, in the work and in the business. But I was still trying to get back with my ex-wife. Like, hey, I'm fine now. We can come yeah, back. you can come you back. You know, if stability. it was the money thing that you left, yeah. you know, I've got a little bit of money mm. now. You can come back. But still she didn't. But at least I had the work and I had the business. And that's why I invested my energy in it. Okay. Um, and reinventing yourself, it just comes with the healing as well. I mean, it's still a process even now as yeah. much as... Uh, it was what a couple of years ago now three four years ago but it's still a process even today of trying to reinvent yourself who am i where am i going and really my work and my business is what and now my kids as well that's what i invest my energy in um and i guess investing your energy in something else kind of takes a little bit away from mm -hmm. from the hurt and the pain because you're no longer concentrating on that yeah. concentrating on my work my business and the things you are busy with at the mm -hmm. moment when um i asked you this question you mentioned that you were watching a lot of uh sermons mm. what i want to know is was god talking to you the specific message or something that you can say god was reassuring me here <laughs> sermons the healing was it specific like healing or uh, was it, it just normal uh your everyday sunday sermon it was it was mostly the message of grace Mm. Um, I so you went to, to YouTube and typed Grace. That's I didn't. What I'm trying yeah, to find no, no, that. I didn't type Grace. I was just listening to to sermons. Uh. Um, and it it weirdly happens this way that <laughs> I would just be listening and they'll they'll be specific to whatever I need at the time. Yeah. So I can say it's God speaking to me. Okay. Um, I listened to a lot of Jonathan Sutter's work, but he was talking about finances, mm. and I was broke, was with no job at the time. Yeah. So I listened to a lot of him where he was. I think it was about twelve of them. Where he teaches principles on on, 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 on finances wow. and then i listen to a lot of craft Lord and joseph prince but they 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 basically preach grace and, mm. and grace and grace and um even when we pay their strength so it wasn't a specific message but it, a lot of it was the message of grace mm. and i think that's what um uplifted me 
and the sermons on, on the teachings on finances uplifted me as well. So I don't think it was a specific healing or it was just a whole so learning. It, was, it wasn't a specific message. It was just learning about grace. Mm. Yeah. I asked that because one of the reasons uh, we are doing this video is because somebody might be looking for a blueprint. Somebody might be alone and they might accidentally type divorce on mm. YouTube and they could uh, relate to your story. So I just wanted to find out how it happens. I know that God uses a lot of things to heal people. Yeah. And I'm glad that you, especially as a man, spoke about crying. Because a lot of people think knowing the Daikali. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm so glad you touched on that. Yeah. Because... Who is responsible if your heart gets broken? Yeah. You know, when I, while I was trying to convince my ex-wife that please let's stay in this thing, let's work it out, mm. she said something so profound. I still remember it today. I remember we were sitting at McDonald's in Bloom, um, <laughs> and she said, "At the end of the day, I am responsible for myself, yeah. and you are responsible for yourself. Yeah. So you are responsible for your own heart. If it's broken, you gave. I mean, giving someone your heart, it's it's a risk. It's a gamble. That's why even after a normal heartbreak, you're like, ish." Hey, should I? Should yeah, I? I yeah. But at the end of the day, when you break it, it means the person has thrown it on the floor, and now it's up to you to leave it there or to pick it up. Sure. Um, so for me, you're you're responsible. Even the Bible, God doesn't say I'm gonna guard your heart for you. Yeah, it yeah. It says guard your heart. Guard your heart. So you guard your heart. So it, it's your it's yours. Mm. He gave it to you for you to take care of. Your life after divorce as a man. Oh. This this question <laughs> I threw it out there and I didn't want it to have limitations. Yeah. Tell us about your life as a man who's divorced. Yeah. My problem or is it is it a problem? My problem is that I went back to what I used to be yeah. before I met Christ. Um, honestly speaking, I went back to womanizing and it it's because I didn't want to give my heart away again. And every time someone tried to get closer, I'd find an excuse to be like. But at the end of the day, I realized, my no, man, mm. I don't like this. I love belonging to someone. Yeah. I love that when I want to go on holiday, I'm, I don't have to now look for someone on my phone. Yeah. Who must I take? I want stability. You know, someone yeah. I can just sit with and be in silence, and it's not awkward. We're just yeah. enjoying each other's company. So for me, that's what I loved. Um, and that's when I started stopping and saying, you know what, just take time, be alone. Mm. Um, I had the business going, I had uh, the work going, so like I said, I concentrated my energies on that. And um, yeah, man, it, it just wasn't fulfilling anymore to be with different people. Mm. So that's what I But did. what I want to know, and I'm sorry <laughs> to interject, yeah. when you go out to society mm. as a divorced man in your family, yeah. Nikki Ting, where at first in Elinda Day, Mama. Mama yeah. Now you come back, you are divorced. Yeah. You're broken, and there's people who are careless about their words. Yeah. They come at you, and it, it got to, there's people who are waiting to say, We knew, man. Yeah. We know Even you. We know, <laughs> you know. So, how yeah. do you, and dating, reinventing yourself mm -hmm. in a world that is so harsh, so harsh of divorced people. How do you go about it? I want you to um, narrate also times when you felt like you are being judged by society or even your family members or your friends in jail. Tell us, give us your life after a divorce. Yeah. But obviously they thought it was my fault because mm. I probably cheated or something. Um, but my friends and my family were very good to me. I felt judged mostly when I went to church. Mm. Like, you know, now you are divorced. So it, it, it kind of feels like um, you did something wrong or you have a stigma on you. Mm, mm. But like I said, the message of grace, um, for me, all it preaches is that Christ took away all of that shame. And that's what you have to keep repeating to yourself and in your mind. Okay? This is not shame. Yeah. Christ took it away. So if I start to feel it, then I'm not honoring what Christ did on the cross. Mm. And that's why making it the message of grace is what kept resonating. I think it helped me then to be able to deal with society because I, I promise you I listen to sermons every night and I cried every night yeah but in the morning I had to wipe my tears and go out and face the world sure. 
And yeah. also, I think it's easier for a man. Mm, yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah, to say that. Because I'm the one now that has to go out and ask a woman out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for a woman, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, but I can't speak from that perspective. But mm. at the end of the day, for a man, it's a bit easier because then I'm the one that has to now go out and hunt for them. So it, it, it was a little bit of my choice. Mm. Um, whether I'm going to go out there, I'm not going to go out there. When am I going to go out there? Sure. Um, so, yeah, I think it's easier for me. I it think definitely it was, is. It, it, it's much easier. Uh, what are the two things that you took away from divorce? So, the two things. There's so many. Uh, I know. But <laughs> if somebody yeah. who was... Somebody contemplating to get married yeah. and they're like, yo, my brother, what are the two things that you can tell me? Maybe about anger or anything actually. What are the two things that you took away that when you get married one day or in relationships, yeah. you can apply that? So for me, I realized that me personally, I love love and I love commitment. Mm. Um, but I am going to look at the signs because with, with my, my marriage now, I love my, my ex wife so much that even the signs that I know now, that I, but these signs is a person yeah. who is not ready. Not that she doesn't love me back, but she's not ready. Mm. I ignored those signs. Um, I mean, my dad, the week we got married, was in hospital. I mean, that was enough to just say, okay, let's hold it, let me take care of my dad. But I ignored every single sign. Yes, I want to marry this woman no matter what. Uh, but what I, what I took away from that is, is, is look at the signs and don't ignore them and don't overlook them. Address them. At least before we even get to that stage, I would say, you know what? These are the issues we have and I know them, so let's go anyway. But I didn't address them then. Mm. So that's the one thing that do not ignore the signs. Address the issues if there are issues. If there are red flags, address the red flags. Don't just ignore them. So you go into this thing fully knowing that, okay, I can live with the bad things you have and I can live with the good things you have mm. because sometimes people are not going to change. Yeah, that's true. So you must just decide whether those bad things are bad things that you can live with. Okay. And yeah, so that's that's the one most important thing I learned. Mm. Yeah. The second one is that I love love. Oh, and I love okay. commitment. I, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing that I've shied away from. Yeah, uh, and say, yeah. yeah, I'm divorced. I don't want to do it again. I mean, I realized that I loved it. I loved the commitment. Mm. I loved being a husband. Yeah. I loved wearing a ring because, yeah. you know, I collect watches. Yeah. So, you know, your <laughs> hand looks time. nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the combos, they you communicate. <laughs> and people <laughs> look at guys. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel you. We are now on our last question. And that is <laughs> dating in, after in. divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for your love? Are you looking to get married? But we've heard there yeah. from your conversation, you to wear now. Can you do a casual boy? Yeah, no. Like, I'm <laughs> glad. <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely am. Mm. Um, I'm just different now. Um, How so? I'm, a, I'm much, much wiser. I know exactly what it is I'm looking for. Yeah. And when I date, I teach people, this is who I am. Yeah. Uh, can you take it? Can you not take it? And if you can't, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you or me. Okay. It just means you're not going in the same direction. Um, tell me your dreams. And let me see if your dreams and my dreams, you know, oh, no. they're heading in the same direction. <laughs> Such so a that, Mr. Romantic. Yeah, because yeah. there's no clash. You don't want there to be those little clashes and those little things. Now you are successful. Now you, you are not successful in whatever you want to do. And you start to blame me that yeah. you left certain things then, because yeah. one, so I don't want those things so I, I my conversations now are, are at that level I'm not now going with the goosebumps and the feelings yeah, yeah. some of my female friends say I'm not emotionally intact yeah. but I say I am they say I'm more logical but I think you know? I think once you, <laughs> once you get older, you understand that love is not about butterflies anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's the coming together of two totally different people. I want to ask? So when you date, mind you, testing the waters or yeah, it's 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 conversations. And um, what I'd love to tell everyone, as much as difficult as it is, 
stay away from the physical stuff. Yeah. You know? um, stay away, especially because that clouds your thinking. I mean, the person might give it to you so good, then you might think, oh, I'm in love, but you're not in love, it's infatuation. Mm. So my dating now is staying away from being physical, but talking and understanding and hearing how this person thinks and how... And let this person be how I think as well, because, I mean, yeah, yeah. he who finds a wife, so I'm the one trying to find a wife, yeah. so it's it's a lot more about picking a person's brain. Yeah. Uh, Can you loan me, my guys, just... because we keep <laughs> mind. So what happens when you get somebody who, they're not sure about marriage? That's a problem. Mm. Uh, that's a problem um, because the conversation shouldn't be, are you sure about marriage? Is are you sure about me? Mm. Am I the person you want to spend the rest of your life with? Okay. And then you don't make marriage this whole big label and heavy. Mm. Are you sure about me? Not marriage, me. Um, it's also a, a thing of now you're going to say to a person, that's why people leave churches. Yeah. Hey, this church is what, are you sure about God? Yeah, yeah. Because if you're sure about God, you can be your church. Every church has drama and issues sure. and politics. But if you're sure about God, you will stay where you feel the spirit of God is there all the Amen. time. Amen. So even in a relationship, are you sure about me? I mean, I just know at night, you know, <laughs> I'm, I've got a bit of a belly, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm emotionally disconnected. Uh, I, I can probably work on my wait, communication. Wait, Somebody's watching yeah. and they're looking at a potential. <laughs> Let's not ruin it no, for you. But I'm saying these, these <laughs> no, are the things. And, and the one thing I am is I'm a good learner. So I will learn yeah, um, yeah, how yeah. a person is. But you must be sure about me with all of my bad and with all of my good. Mm. that this is you with whatever you come with okay. it's you i wanted to ask yeah. something did you do pre-marital counseling uh we didn't have mm. yeah i think I, I i can't really also blame my pastor because he loved me he loved her he thought hey, you guys are leaders yeah no you guys got this going you know yeah throw you in the pool and swim but uh, so, what advice would you give somebody who is looking into get, uh, getting married and they're young and they're Christian mm. but they're scared because we see the statistics. Mm. Although we do not talk about it, it is happening. What advice would you give them to say before you get into this, I would advise you to, because you've already said, Uguti, we must, somebody must look at you whole Uguti. You have mistakes, you have this, mm. but... Is this what is this your forever? Yeah. Like the snoring, is it forever? <laughs> like this is your life forever, guys. <laughs> Another reason we're trying to do this video is we want people to get married and it be a forever thing. Like Ungene in that institution of marriage and it be forever. Yeah. I like the grace part because it allows people to have mistakes. Yeah. So I think getting, I want you to give somebody who's listening over to how do you maneuver around this process? I think you answered it a bit, hey? um, mm. Grace is important. Um, and to just understand, a person is probably not going to change. So accept them with their mistakes and their bad things. Or their mistakes and their good. And their good. If they are good, ways more than their mistakes, then go with it. Um, marriage does not change people. Yeah, it's like money. Sure, you just become more of who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so whatever a person is, they they are going to increase, and and their their the attitude and the person and their character is going to increase, and they're going, you're going to see more of it now. Mm. Because now I'm not trying to impress you. I yeah, got you. yeah. So now you're like, going to see the real me. Yeah. Ne so look at the red flags and decide whether you are going to be able to live with it or not. For me, that is just my one advice. Mm. Um, and at the end of the day, don't look at your, the, the thing you're talking about in this because I know sometimes um, churches can arrange marriages without even, you know, mm. they're nudging you gently like, ah, that guy's got yeah. this and this is going somewhere. That one, she's a leader in the choir. Yeah, you two can yeah, be compatible. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, if the two of you here have to live together. Yeah. So that's why you, you in your heart, you have to decide whether this person is a person for me and forever. Mm. Um, come hell or high water, come Rudula Kobi Kukum or in a mansion. Yeah. I just want to be with this person and this is what makes me happy. Okay. I love it. I, and we hope that this video was very helpful to you. So let us know if you relate to Canela's story 
and if there's anything you wanna say really, thank you. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>